Hello Prescott Valley, my name is Lori Hunt and I'm your Vice Mayor. I'm so excited today to be here on Council Conversation. I have two of my friends with me today and I have Heidi Delms Foster who is not only our wonderful marketing director and communications director but she is also in charge of the healing fields this year and I also have my friend Pilar Hemry who is the volunteer coordinator again this year. Again. So I'm so excited. This is near and dear to my heart um, because it's so important yes, to remember. So I want to ask you what I've asked you before. What's new this year? Tell us about the speaker because well, I know she's amazing. Yes, um, we always, uh, you know, it's always amazing to me who, who comes up because uh, the 9-11 touched virtually everybody. And so, you know, here we are 20, 20, more than 20 years out and we still are finding people with stories to tell. And so this year we have uh, Stacy Goodman and Stacy was a police patrol officer on Long Island when 9-11 happened. And she had been receiving ongoing and extensive training in disaster response. She was a member of a federal disaster uh, response team and so then on 9-11, she was on Long Island, she was immediately deployed to Ground Zero. Mm -hmm. And so she spent 23 days there. She's wow. written a book, and uh, now she lives in Cave Creek, and she's going to come up and be our keynote speaker this year. Is she bringing books, I hope? Yes, she is. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll have a book signing. You'll be able to read the whole story, yes. which I'm sure will be pretty intense. So she was on the ground 23 yeah. days yeah. after... 9-11. Yeah. And one of the things I'm fond of, of saying is that our, a couple of our uh, central, at the time it was central Yavapai Fire, now it's Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of those guys were um, on the first FEMA team on the ground on 9-11. So I was able to go back there a month later and uh, visit and uh, they got me up into the um, incident command center there and so I spent the whole day there and that was pretty intense as well. And I like to remind people that you were our keynote speaker last year so tell us a little bit about your passion for 9-11. Well I was born in New York and so of course 9-11 hit close to home. I came out west when I was pretty young but there's kind of a saying once a New Yorker always a New Yorker mm. and uh, you know it just hit right at, at a place that was, you know, it's kind of a, one of the hearts of our country. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I still have family back there. And um, I was working at the newspaper at the time at the Prescott Valley Tribune, and I wrote about a lot of, we, you know, I just, people here had connections to New York, and um, people came out here, and our people went back there. And so I wrote a lot about the all of the happenings and the people and their stories. And so last year at the 9-11 ceremony, I was able to share those stories, some of them which were pretty intense. So, And you've told me before that when you were a reporter, one of your favorite things was to just go and talk to people while they were amongst the flags. Right, well, every flag on the healing field, and there's about 3,000 of them, has a tag that honors somebody who lost their life on 9-11. Mm -hmm. And so we have maps so people can come and um, just visit the information booth and they can find the name of the person that they know and, they, and we can lead them straight to that flag. And uh, that's just really touching for people. They've found family members or um, one gentleman that I talked to one day I was walking through the field and talked to a gentleman who his best friend um, died in 9-11 mm -hmm. and uh, so he was able to come to the field and find that flag and honor his friend, pay his respects. And the field's open 24-7, it's lit so people are able to come. Um, we find people walking through the field in the middle of the night even. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, a, it's really a sacred ground for that week. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so um, what else in addition to the flags can we expect? So say I'm new to town. Mm -hmm. I know nothing about Field of Honor. Tell me okay. what's going on. 
So the flags on the Prescott Valley Healing Field will go up at the Civic Center on September 8th, and we will have, uh, we'll start very early morning. Um, hundreds of volunteers are involved in this. And so uh, the flags will go up within a couple of hours all over the field, cover the field. And so they will stay up for an entire week. And uh, like I said, it's open 24-7, lit 24-7. And then, so the day after the flags go up, we have the Patriot Run Walk. And this is a benefit run walk for the uh, Central Arizona um, Honor Guard, the Fire Honor Guard, that, that travels to pay their respects to other firefighters around the country who have lost their lives. And so that benefits that, and it's a pretty popular run. And, um, just runs through an area of the town and then it ends at the Civic Center with all the flags. And then right after that, on September 9th, um, we'll have, we're going to have a pancake breakfast. And it's donation only and that will benefit replacing the flags because this year we had to replace, <laughs> a lot. with the volunteers, we had to replace almost 2,000 <clears throat> flags. Wow. And that's because, you know, we have monsoon storms and all kinds of things and the flags just wear out. Mm -hmm. So that's going to benefit. And we really want to thank Chow Bella, local restaurant, and Salt and Pepper in Prescott because they are sponsoring this entire breakfast and they're even going to be out cooking for it. Wow. So that'll be at 830. And then at 1030, following the run and the breakfast, we'll have the blessing of the field ceremony right there. Mm -hmm. where, and that's at Theater on the Green, at the amphitheater at the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. And people get to come and, um, you know, we'll have the honor guard, and we'll have a short program, and it just, and we have what we call placing of the final boots mm -hmm. at the bottom of the flags. Every firefighter who lost their life in 9-11 has a set of boots at the end, bottom of the flag. Every child has a teddy bear, mm -hmm. and every first responder has a set of boots. And this year we're adding... Um, uh, it's a collar and a bowl, isn't it, for um, to honor of the uh, um, search and rescue dogs who gave so much at 9-11. Oh. Oh. So we also have 19 flags out there to honor the 19 uh, hotshots who lost their lives at the Yarnell Hill fire. Mm. So that, will, that event at 1030 um, on that Saturday the 9th will open the field. And then... Uh, after that, um, on the Monday evening, September 11th, it's always on the 11th, at 6 p.m., the town will have its annual Patriot Day ceremony. And so we have, uh, we'll have a whole program. Stacy will speak, we'll have a national anthem singer, we'll have the Honor Guard, the American Legion, and then they lower that gigantic mm -hmm. flag from the top of the Civic Center, which is always really a one of my favorite heart touching parts, moment. Yeah. Yeah. Between that and the bagpipes. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're dry high. Yeah. They're yep. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So all of this, we could not do any of it without the hundreds of volunteers who just so selflessly give of themselves. And so that's Pilar's job. All right. <laughs> segway. Good segue. She is amazing. <laughs> I, we couldn't do it without her. So how many volunteers do we have approximately, Pilar? Just the morning of flag installation on September 8th, we have about 200 that come out. Wow. That's just for those two hours. And then throughout the week, we staff the information booth. And you can volunteer for an hour. You can volunteer for four hours. And then on September 16th, we have flag takedown. And we definitely need volunteers to come out and help with that as well. Same thing, about 200. So what does volunteering through the week include? I know it helps people, you have to help people find a boot or a, or, or a name. So what does that include? You're welcoming people to the field. Mm -hmm. Some visitors just want to come out and they just want to be there. They really don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have others that say, I have a friend, a family member, a loved one. Where are they? Mm -hmm. So we have a map, we have a list, and we can show them exactly where that flag is, mm -hmm. and they can go out and spend time, honor, um, be a part of that. That's awesome. But, and as you heard Heidi say, we couldn't do it without our fabulous volunteers. Oh, and yeah. we need lots of them, because right. it mm -hmm. takes a village. <laughs> So let's give the website. 
Okay, that's healingfieldpv.com. It, and you can find everything about our Prescott Valley Healing Field on that website. It's history, um, how to volunteer, how to sign up. And we have several volunteer opportunities. Um, you know, there's putting up the flags. And then uh, through the week, we often have monsoon storms, which flatten about half. I think last year it flattened about half that the was field. Fine. And so everybody had to go out the next morning and put that up. Sometimes during the week there's flags that are damaged from weather and stuff that... Yeah. need to be replaced we have an information booth that is manned as long as we can find people to man it we mm -hmm. we have it out there all day and then um, the flag takedown and often at the end of the week people are maybe tired or they don't think about it we really can use people who will dedicate themselves to come help us pack that field up and put it away so so Pilar you have more notes what did we forget on your list <laughs> I just want to thank the volunteers that have already stepped mm -hmm. up this year okay. in a big way. Good. Um, we don't just show up to the field and have the flags there and they go up. Right. So right now we've been the last few weeks doing flag replacement. So we go to where the flags are housed at the warehouse and unfurl, check them to make sure that they are still in good shape. Mm -hmm. If they are, refurl and they get put back so we can bring them out to the healing field. Those that have been ripped or torn, take them off, replace them, and then they are taken um, either by the fire department at CAFMA or um, one of our other volunteers, Peggy, who's running our tags portion of the flag installation this year. And they are, with respect, taken care of and mm -hmm. yeah. so, tags is a huge thing yeah. you know because all those yeah. tags have to be in order they have to match our maps right and so we're so thrilled to have Peggy what's Peggy's last name Peggy Schmidt Peggy Schmidt and, and she's heading up the tag team this year if you will and so she's refreshing with new tags and well the tags are taken off the flags every year uh -huh. and so um, and then they have to be put back on every year and we replace any damaged ones or whatever needs to be done. And so um, volunteers have to walk through the field and make sure all those tags are fastened to the flagpoles in order. Mm -hmm. And so she's heading that up this year and we're so happy to have her. It's a critical and, piece. Right. Yes. And Heidi, I'm glad you mentioned history because it, it wouldn't be right not to give a shout out to Mary Mallory, oh, our supervisor, yeah. who is the brainchild of this whole thing. Right. Who Mary bro uh, brought the healing fields to Prescott Valley. Right. And that was in 2012. And it was, it, I mean, she still is behind the scenes volunteering and helping us with Raising the healing money. field. Yep. Yep. And she, uh, in, in 2012, that was her dream to bring the healing field to the community. And, and she, she did it in a big way. Mm -hmm. And we owe her a huge debt of gratitude. And then a big shout out to Leon at Chow Bella mm -hmm. and his staff yes. who's going to come and cook pancakes for everyone. Yeah. And then also to Ace Hardware, who's <coughs> been a big contributor Ace this year. Ace donated this year. And we also want to give a shout out to uh, Alliance and Builders Home Center because they have donated replacements of uh, rebar this year that we desperately needed that gets bent Great. and things happen Great. and also um, we want to uh, thank Christina uh, Zangus in our communications department her husband is actually welding new rebar drivers for us this year as a volunteer thing nice. so we're very um, thankful to him it it's just so many volunteers are involved so many people have take this field to heart it sounds like a big family effort it is it is yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's quite so. the education process too. I know you've gotten some awesome pictures through the years of children mm -hmm. walking through the field. And we love our local schools. They bring, um, particularly Liberty and Alliance, or Alliance, sorry, AAEC, which mm -hmm. is right across the street from the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. They bring volunteers and they bring the kids through the fields. And it's interesting, we have an essay contest they walk through but also through the years, they walk through and they read those tags. Mm -hmm. And they get an idea of, of what the field means and that we're honoring victims of an attack right here on our own soil. Right. And that's history that we don't dare forget. 
So let's wrap up and show the flyer because that has okay. all the information on it. We also have a Facebook page. And with that, I want to thank you ladies for being on Council Conversation. Thank you. Thanks for I want to thank the community for watching. We'll have this on Facebook. And um, that's it for us today. Please and come will, out. Yeah.